Deadlands takes place in the Weird West, a treacherous frontier where legends are born and nightmares are real. Here, five wild cards come together to seek fortune, justice, and revenge, and what awaits them in the treatment area. Hello everyone and welcome back to Deadlands with Oxventure. I am Andy, I will be the marshal today for the game and with me are our players, if you could introduce yourself, starting with you, Mike. I'm Mike and I'm playing Silas Flit. Um, I'm Ellen and I'm playing Edie Valentine. And this episode is brought to you by Misty Mountain Gaming, who have given us some of their brand new cage gear dice to play with today. You can get a pair for yourself and see some of the other gorgeous Misty Mountain Gaming products by going to mistymountaingaming.com and stay tuned to find out how you can win some of your own Misty Mountain dice. Our thanks to Misty Mountain Gaming for the support. So jingly and jangly. Yeah. Uh, so, last time, uh, Nate, Garnet, and DeLacy travelled to the town of Dead Man's Worth to kill the first bounty on the Widow Victoria's List, a man named Benjamin Bellows. There they discovered that Bellows holds a regular dueling contest in order to draw out his enemies and make them easier to kill. Uh, long story short, you'll have to watch the episode to find out exactly what happened, but Bellows was defeated and there is now one fewer name on Victoria's List. So, today we have uh, Edie and we have Silas. Uh, and you're kind of hanging out in um, in Victoria's home. You're in the sort of parlor. Got it. Uh, she's gone off to sort of get the details on the next target. The others are away doing their mission at the moment. That's so uh, you two have decided that you're the ones uh, ready to take on the next target. So sounds good. Yeah, you're just sort of here in the in the house. What's going on? So they got these long faces and the, the cold dead eyes that belie a kind of equine intelligence that I don't rightly trust. And they got the power to kick a man apart, I heard. <laughs> Have you heard maybe about, you know, trying to befriend a small one first? I heard there's those Shetland ponies. A tiny horse. The little tiny horse. Is More that. manageable size. Yeah, exactly, and then work your way up. Okay, I'll consider it, but uh, I still don't like the way they look. I get it, I get it. They are quite big animals, so. So powerful, those thighs. Yeah. Well, you know, they can carry a man, you know? Yeah, right straight to the gates of hell. Well, okay. <sighs> Silas, you are an interesting fellow. What does that mean? You're interesting. I like hearing your opinions right. on the world I thought, and your... I thought that might be sarcasm. No, not not in the slightest, okay. Silas. Do not worry. At this point, Victoria walks into the room. She's like, oh, hello, what are you talking about? Small horses? Yeah, I, I heard those Shetland ponies are so cute. Mm, we actually have a, a, a small horse out back, Silas, if you wanted to. I do not want to see it. Just okay. Maybe. No. Feed it feed some today. carrots or something to see if it. No. I think no. if we just let it rest today, I, I, think, come I around, think he's. Huh? He eventually, maybe by the end of this whole adventure, he might be okay to give it a pat on the mane. But I used to have a beautiful horse. I don't ride it much anymore, but if you would like to. No, eyes as black as pitch. I mean, that is the color of horses' eyes, certainly. I don't trust them. Okay, well, regardless, we have a job here to do today, so uh, how, are you, how are you both feeling? I'm ready for action. Yeah, pretty good. And then Recover from that Sasquatch. Yes, that I was mean, quite you a shock. Horses. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. came in in a pretty bad way last time, Silas. How do you, you went to see Doc oh, I went, Cochran? Yeah, I feel, I feel just peachy, man. Feeling, feeling better. Yeah. Your wounds have healed. You'd say. Just about. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Well. Um, yeah. So today, we'll be uh, we'll be sending you after after Daisy Ducrow. Um, she unfurls the wanted poster. Um, she mentions that uh, she's had some of these wanted posters drawn up in the past for the gang in her past attempts to sort of bring them to justice. Um, so she unfolds this. There's a drawing of a woman on it. She has um, clearly uh, like a shaved head. Um, she's quite dark complexion, very angular cheekbones. Um, she's wearing a hat, sort of high up on the back of her head um, in the wanted poster. And the poster says, uh, wanted. Um, and then underneath it says, 40 times a killer. So this is uh, Daisy Shitcan Ducrow, <laughs> it says on the poster. <laughs> this is Daisy. I mean, other members of the gang were more obviously violent or cruel, but there were a few deadlier than Daisy. Victoria 40 says, times. Fixing you 
with a look. Um, That's quite the figure. Yeah, it was said she was a, a serial killer um, who had killed 40 people before she even joined the gang in the first place. And she calmed down during the... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it got any better after. I think it just gave her more excuses to keep on killing. Fun. It said she uh, she favoured poison, so she was never they were never oh. able to sort of link her to... The coward's way. Yeah, I see. To any of these uh, any of these murders, but she she always managed to make it look like natural causes. Where She's, has she been seen? Well, so the intel that I have um, says that she was last seen in the town of Sublimity Falls, um, which is you know about half a day's half a day's ride away from here, not too far. How many? How, how far to walk? <laughs> <laughs> probably a day and a half to walk, or I mean, the stage will take you there. Okay. If you wanted to get a stagecoach, it does have a train station. It's quite a large, prosperous town, so you could also get the train. That would be my preference. There are other ways to get there. The nickname comes from she she had a series of jobs, and she just kept uh, people kept dying in mysterious circumstances. Getting so shit canned. She would get shit canned, <laughs> and that was uh, that's how she picked up the nickname. She wore it as a kind of badge of honor. Is there any other information on the wanted poster at all? Yeah, I uh, like. Edie really wants to check this wanted poster after not checking the Sasquatch <laughs> poster. <laughs> so, um, not really, it's Scary. just um, it lists, you know, the fact that she's wanted for killing 40 people, has the sort of the drawing of her on there. Um, you know, any information, please contact, you know, Sheriff, whoever. Fellow Wild Man. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. Uh, it won't be easy, but when the job is done and the crow is dead. Um, I would like you to bring me back uh, the gang ring that she wore. It bears their insignia um, as proof that the, the deed is done. Understood. Imagine she's still wearing it. They never took them off. So that's really all I've, I've got to go on. It's a little less than some of the others. She's been, she hasn't really made much of a splash um, since since the gang dissolved. So the, I mean, the, the intel I have is just this town. So uh, I'm sorry, I can't be of, of more help. We better ask around. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think. It makes sense with the way that she used to kill, and now she's not got the gang around her to protect her. She's going back to her old ways. Mm. So she's laying low. I will be exclusively drinking alcohol to counteract the effects of any potential poison. I don't know whether that rally will I've already started drinking. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> How are you at drinking? Are you, you, is it a skill? Oh, your... God. <laughs> no, I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a skill, but, you know, it, it drink too much, perhaps, and it might uh, have an effect. No, I'm just going to have two fingers of whiskey, I think. Two fingers just to whiskey. settle my stomach right, after all this horse whiskey. talk. That's fine. That's a, that's a free action. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so what's the, what's the plan, team? Should we travel by train? Uh, I, I'm willing to take the railroad if you are... Less inclined to go near I the equine species. Yes. Mm-hmm. So should we head to the? We'll head to the train station. I think. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Victoria um, says, "I I thought you might feel that way, Silas. So I have procured you some some train tickets." Here. Oh. Oh, so thank you. Very can. kind. Much obliged. Hands them over. Um, is there anything else you think you'll need, or could I can provide you with? Uh, how How long is the ride on the train? Oh, it shouldn't be more than a couple of hours. Oh. Maybe, maybe some snacks. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a problem. Um, she goes into the kitchen and uh, prepares um, a packed lunch for each of you. <laughs> There's some sandwiches. Take the little lunch boxes. Some potato chips. Oh well, chips. I, I was thinking like a bag of, you know, dry, trail mix. Dry, yeah. <laughs> right, nuts. Raisins and, yeah. and nuts. But this is. No, this is... Uh, there's a little pot of homemade hummus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yes. What the best is this? I've had in days. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I licked the pot of hummus. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, I couldn't think of anything. I, Ellen couldn't think of anything much better. Right. So I think, <laughs> I think we're going to progress to the train station. Okay, so you head to the train station. Um, there's a yeah, there's a train leaving um, which stops at Sublimity Falls. Um, we can just montage this. It's an uneventful train journey. Um, you roll through the countryside. Every time I see a horse, I burn my eyes. Yeah, mm-hmm. just in case it steals my soul. Sure. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I give him, I give Silas a heads up every time I see one. I'm like, yeah. to your left. <laughs> Unfortunately, the carriage you're in has a large poster of a horse on the on the wall. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's advertising the wide open plains, uh, the wild horses <laughs> yeah. that you can see out west. Um, Great. This is so, train heading east. <laughs> so I presume you position yourself so you don't have to look at this this poster. Um, okay, so the train rolls into um, Sublimity Falls. This this town is a little more developed than the sort of small one-horse towns you've been in of late. Um, 
There are kind of solid brick buildings with kind of wraparound balconies on the real uh, fancy pants stuff on the upper floors. You, you know, you sort of take a look at the, as you sort of pass the town as you roll into the station. Mm. You see sort of a large pharmacist, a general store. There's a saloon called the Diamond Bell, um, but you don't see many people. Um, the town looks quite quiet as you sort of step off the. Uh, well, they've all been killed. <laughs> 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 She's been busy. She's at large. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so you roll into the station and, and step off the train, and you are at mm. the uh, at the train station in Sublimity Falls. We should ask around. Yeah, I I say, best gossip that you can get is down at the saloon. Always a good uh, good option. I think uh, the pharmacist may may know something about the, uh, that the poisonings. That is a good point. Yeah. So. Uh, but let's go to the saloon first. <laughs> okay. Okay, he's gonna step out into the sort of the main main street of this of this town. You're gonna um, sort of cast your eyes around, or you're gonna head straight to the. Oh, yeah, saloon. I'm gonna have a little uh, look yeah. around and just see, get the vibe. Other than there's not many people. Cool. There. How are people reacting to us? Um, well. There aren't many people around, mm-hmm. to be honest. Uh, you see a few people sort of hurrying between buildings, but. Um, yeah, they look a little, uh, a little worried, a little stressed. Um, uh, Edie, if you do me a notice roll, please. Mm-hmm. So I've got an eight notice. Okay, so we've got a five and a seven. Okay, so you've rolled a success, but not a raise. All right, fine. So yeah, you're looking around um, the town. You notice that um, some of the houses are sort of boarded up. Um, they've got sort of boards hammered over the windows and the doors, and there's a large red X on uh, on the huh. doors of some of these houses. And also at the end of the um, of the sort of main street, you see a large, imposing, sort of gothic. It's like a three-story building with a, a tower with a sort of mansard roof um, that looks uh, exactly like the Adams family house. Mm, it's it, <laughs> it looks a little more institutional than a house. It doesn't look like a home. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, All it's right. um, sort of larger and and more imposing. Okay. Um, you can't see what there's sort of sign outside. You can't make it out from where you are here. Huh. Um, but you also there's um, the pharmacist, the, the saloon, as mentioned before. Several yeah. other. So it looks you know like it contains everything a sort of prosperous, well-run town would have. There's just not a lot of people around. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Almost. Boarded up houses doesn't look good. Yeah. Hopefully not some kind of plague or affliction. I think knowing that Daisy in town, I think we know the answer. Okay. Shall uh, we still head to the saloon? Or? Yep. Let's go and ask some questions. Okay. Okay, so you're heading to the saloon? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, you walk in. Um, the it's the, the name of the place is the Diamond Bell. There is a uh, bartender behind the bar. Um, it's... Again, eerily quiet inside. Um, although it is kind of quite early in, in the afternoon, so you know it's not peak hours. By it's any five o'clock somewhere. Stretch of the <laughs> imagination. Um, there's a, a bartender here. Um, he sort of yeah. sees you come in and he sort of straightens up. Yeah. And like, um, hello. What? What can I get you? Uh, straight bourbon, please, barkeep. Bourbon, and for you, miss. Uh, do you have a sweet tea? Sweet tea? Mm-hmm. So he goes under the counter, pulls out a pitcher of sweet tea, pours you one, pours you a yep. bourbon. Um, that'll be 50 cents or whatever. Sure. Okay. Uh, wow, well, can sir, thank you for this tea, by the way. It's the nicest I've had in a long time, <laughs> sir. Um, thank you very much, ma'am. I was wondering, why is it so quiet? This town is beautiful. We're we're touring the West, see? And we're looking for somewhere to call home and uh, set up shop, you know? And I'm just wondering, what's with all those boarded up houses? Hmm. Yeah, it's a real, real, real shame what's been happening to the town. There's been, uh, there's been a lot of sickness coming into town. Um, and people have been disappearing as well. It's been the strangest thing. There's been uh, unexplained disappearances, people vanishing from their homes. Um, sometimes they come back and they got this plague on them, you see. Nothing we can do for them. Best we can do is nail them up in their homes so they don't get anyone else sick. It's, uh, 
been real hard times for the town. Uh, I mean, a lot of people just moved on. There's no, no kind of a life for a lot of the people here. People lost loved ones and can't stand to be reminded of them. And a real shame. This place used to be, uh, used to be a wonderful town. But uh, just last year or so, I don't know what happened around here. Thinking of moving on myself. No, well, the thing is, I'm, I'm looking also while we're traveling for an old friend, um, Daisy McCrow? McCrow? Yeah. Ducrow. 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 Well, I have heard the name Ducrow. Uh, the, uh, the director up at the sanatorium. I believe she's named Ducrow. Uh, yeah, the sanatorium, the big building down the end of the street. What's the sanatorium? Uh, I, it's, it's like a, a hospital for, for rich folks. Uh, didn't seem to be doing very well for a while there. It's kind of, uh, not very popular. And then maybe, maybe 18 months, two years ago, this Duke Crow came in as the new director. And ever since then, there have been all kinds of rich folk coming here. They say they can cure the incurable up at that place. They got, she got some kind of new method, some kind of strange science, I don't know, but there's, there's rich folks coming into town, look sick as dogs, and when they leave, they look fit as a fiddle. I don't know what's going up on there, but I think, I think the crow is in, in charge. I've never, I've never seen her here in town. This wouldn't happen to coincide with the plague, would it? Uh, well, now that you mention it, about a about a year ago it started happening. So I guess the timelines do align. Fine. Uh do you see much of Mr. Crow? Like I said, I've not seen her in town. They I mean they get supplies run up there. They got beds and whatnot. I don't know. Maybe she comes out at night. I ain't seen her. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, I try and stay indoors at night because of, you know, what they say. What do they say? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if you should be telling you this. Do me a persuasion roll. All right, I'll do your persuasion roll. Uh, that would be, oh, I've got a d6 in that. All right. That is a six and yeah. a one. Roll the six again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the three. He sort of looks around, he's like, I don't know if I should be telling you, it's just a rumor, you know, these kids, but I mean, the people who are disappearing, there gotta be a reason to that, right? Right. And some people, they say they seen a guy coming in through the windows, in through unlocked back doors, got a mask, like a horrifying face. He comes in, he snatches people up, he takes them away, and they're never seen again. I mean... Is it the young? Is it the old? Nah, it's whoever. All right. Jameson, Smythe, the farrier. Never see him again. William Boone, the copy boy for the newspaper. He okay. went missing. Uh, Laura Lungberg, the bank clerk. She's gone as well. It seems random. But people say they've seen this, this fella. Sounds like you've got a problem on your hands. I know. That's why people have been moving away. All right. Is there anyone else who may know more? Within the town. Uh, about, uh, what about the... About both, about any of this. Feels connected. I mean, like I said, there ain't many people around who want to talk about this stuff. It's, I mean, it's bad for property prices, you know what I'm saying? And everyone's looking to sell up and move. Um, I know you could try the, the pharmacist. Uh, the guy down there, Dr. Uh, Dr. Randolph Spurred. You know, he's... Uh, we were thinking of swinging by. Yeah, I mean, he knows he knows more about the kind of the sicknesses and the illnesses these people have than, than most anyone else in town who isn't up at the sanatorium. All right, you've been very helpful. Much obliged to you. I feel like maybe we should uh, wander over to the I think, pharmacist. Uh, yeah, I think the pharmacist is the next move. All right. Uh, well, we'll finish up our drinks, mm -hmm. I suppose, and um, <laughs> yeah, straight down the hatch. That's a sweet tea you're yeah. drinking. <laughs> Gonna get a real sugar yeah. high. Yeah, got, my, got my sugar buzz on. Um, yeah, is there, is there anyone else in the saloon at all? Like, are we literally the only customers? Mm -hmm. I uh, so. You're the only customers. There's uh, like a boy sweeping. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's pretty quiet. Yeah. I wonder if the boy would know anything more. 
could talk to the kid. I would, I, I'd like to sidle up to the kid. I'm like, hey, fella. Yes, who is it? <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> Sweeping the floor, I am. <laughs> well, you don't thing. sound like you're from around here. <laughs> um, I just, I just wanted to ask you, do you know anything about all the spooky things that are happening in this town? Yeah, it's a bloody monster. <laughs> Come and get him. People out of their beds, there he is. <laughs> No, I hate it here. Just save enough enough money so I can get out. Oh, you sweet child. Bloody Did monster's you... gonna get me if I don't. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the premium role play. <laughs> oh wait, Jesse said he saw him. Where, where, where did, where did, sorry, lost my accent. <laughs> where did you see him? <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> Where did, uh, where did your friend see him? He was lurking around in the alleys. In the alleys. So he was climbing up on a roof. Okay. A horrible face he did, like a mask. Come on. That corroborates well, me. Well, <laughs> thank you for your help, and I, I'd give him a dollar. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> a dollar! <laughs> That's like a million dollars in out money. <laughs> I know, it was to help you get out of town. I, you know, help you and your family. Thank you, miss. That's okay. Scarp is out of the room. Good. Screw your job, idiot! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot, lady. <laughs> I'm gonna sweep my own damn floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> he picks up the broom and shoots you a venomous glance. <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. I'm real like butterfly eye eyelashes. Like, right. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Puppy We're up, just saving you uh, employment costs at this difficult financial time. You're right. welcome. I think it would be prudent to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're just saving Silence, you some. Silence. <laughs> 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 All right, if I get dragged out mm -hmm. towards the pharmacy, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> right, okay, fine. Uh, what time of day is it? It's. It's getting getting close on to monster time. <laughs> it's getting on for evening. So. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Okay. Gotta go to this pharmacy quick. Yeah, before they shut. Uh, okay. Yeah, the pharmacist is a um, sort of large brick building with big um, sort of mm. uh, windows <laughs> in front. It's got the sort of um, big glass balls full of different coloured liquids mm. in the window. All of them have got <laughs> cocaine you, in. When you said the pharmacist, I thought you were talking about the man. <laughs> the, the guy. And then you said a big brick building, and I was okay. Yeah, right, the pharmacist <laughs> himself is a big brick, <laughs> <a> big brick <laughs> building. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "No, it's you know, it's your it's you go in and there's um, big uh, wooden drawers with little brass handles and little paper things all up and down the walls. Lots of different ingredients. There's a man um, behind the counter. He has a sort of enormous mustache that is taking over most of his face. He's wearing a bowler hat, and a waistcoat, a little um, watch fob, and he's sort of just like fussing over some ingredients on the on the desk. Excuse me." Yep. Uh, you're the pharmacist here. Uh, we, right. under, we understand there's some uh, mystery affliction affecting the people in this town. No, you heard about that, did you? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, yep. You got me stumped. <clears throat> some of these folks, they vanish. Never come back. Some of them come back. They is so full of disease, I ain't never seen anything like it. I can't do nothing for them. You tried? Oh, yeah. Try everything. Tried all the old timey <laughs> medical procedures we got. I tried draining blood. I tried putting in different blood. <laughs> I tried tinctures. I gave him a syrup made of opium and cocaine. <laughs> I well, mean, that, that doesn't should do have it. worked. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Leeches, potions, a poultice I made out of stuff I found. I gotta tell you, medical <laughs> medical aid in this time is not good. <laughs> but I tried everything that usually works. Nothing, nothing doing. You see any kind of pattern or uh, uh, any kind of reason why this might be happening? I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, folks seem perfectly normal one day, and then they come back, and they got more disease in them than a diseased hog. <laughs> They've got a disease. Right. Well, I must say, 
to be honest, though, you, you real lucky to be in the same town as that sanatorium. Like, maybe, maybe there's something that they can do. Um, is, is there any business that you do with them? Have they been able to <laughs> stave it off? That fancy pants place? No, nah, they wouldn't deal with the type of people that we have down here in town. That's for the fancy folks. They come in on the train, they head up there to the sanatorium, they're there a few days, and they get back on the train looking better than ever. I don't know what, what they do up in there. I went up there to try and see the place, but unless you is flush with cash, they ain't interested in having you around. I see, I see. That, that is real shame. Hmm. Seems there's one medicine for the likes of us and one medicine for the likes of them. Yeah, I'm sure. I would like to know their secrets. Um, oh, I'm so sure would I. Would but too. Yeah. You know, they lock that place up tight. I, I don't know. It's a real shame what's happened to this town. It used to be a nice place to live. Now it's all horror and <laughs> disease. You hear anything about some nighttime intruder? Well, that's the rumor. I ain't never seen anything like it. That kid over in the saloon, always yelling about the man with the face. <laughs> I don't know, that kid drinks too much whiskey. <laughs> Any whiskey is too much whiskey for that kid. <laughs> uh, you, should kid. See, <laughs> you should see him go, I tell you. <laughs> he was down in whiskey and Sweeping up and yelling about dollars. <laughs> what a rich character he is. <laughs> rich and fully formed, that's what I thought. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and his voice, so natural and good. The accent, 3,000 miles in the making. Man, I love it. I love that little character. Who, his name that I'd know. <laughs> you ever been up to the... The hospital and well, like I said, I went up there as a fellow professional. Thought mm. out of courtesy, they might, you know, sit down with me, maybe give me a tour of the facilities. And they asked me if I had money, and then they just turned me away when I said no. Should have said yes. Well, in retrospect, <laughs> sir, yes, maybe I should have. <laughs> no, they don't like the likes of us up there. I got a new plan. We go up. We said we got money. I'm thinking the same thing. Did you ever meet Miss Daisy Ducrow while you, on your brief encounter with the staff at the sanatorium? Is she the director up there? Yeah. Nope, never saw her. Heard her over the inter intercom system they had, the speaking tubes. Oh, fancy. Mm. Yeah, they got a speaking tube thing there. She can make her voice throughout the entire building up there. But no one in there. Sure like that. There was a very, uh, very officious man on the door. Told me to take my broke ass back to the pharmacy. So, fine. Well, that's just rude. That is rude. I, I agree. <laughs> so anyway, I had a tincture of cocaine and lead. Felt much better. <laughs> Felt a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> the lead shakes. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a drug, it's a medicine. Of course. Because if I top, stop taking it, I start feeling really ill. No, oh, mm. right. I yeah, see. It's, I, well, I it's a preventative show. Sure, sure. Well, <laughs> so you have studied I, the pharmaceutical arts. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah um, <laughs> I, I would say uh, maybe try something else. <laughs> Opium, I heard, is good. Uh, no. Opium is good. Yeah. <laughs> he takes out some uh, hydro opium eye drops. <laughs> drops them into his eyes, his pupils instantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir. Enjoy well, your afternoon. You too. Talking horse. That evening Stock and probably till about four in the morning when that stuff wears off. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what options we have other than to stroll up to the sanatorium and... Uh... <sighs> I mean, we could go and like have a peruse, a little, a little look, and look just, around, just see from a distance. Okay. And if anyone asks, we say, "We're looking for the sanatorium. We wanted to make sure that this was the right one. We are interested <laughs> in being paid customers." It's the only haunted ass building in the place, but okay. As this is happening, sort of out of the window of the pharmacy, <laughs> you see a very ornate stagecoach um, roll past. <gasps> oh, hello! And roll up to the building that you understand is the sanatorium um, and a man gets out with a couple of um, a couple of attendants 
Uh, he looks very well to do. He's wearing a sort of top hat. He has a sort of large waistcoat. He looks like a partially in- inflated balloon. <laughs> sort of, um, but he's he seems to be struggling. Um, he's coughing a lot, and right. uh, he's helped up the steps and through the front door. Mm. Um, do me a do me a notice roll. Okay. Mm-hmm. Both of you. Like D6. So we've got a six and a six. Whoa, okay. And a two. <laughs> okay. I got a four and a two. Okay. Um, you both of you recognize this uh, this man as uh, Senator Julius Waxman. He's an influential, oh. very wealthy politician. Um, he's recently stepped back from uh, politics due to acute tuberculosis. Oh, man. Right. So, yeah, he's entered. Enter the chat. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, should we stroll over? We could maybe. Uh, are we close enough to, to catch up with them? Is that? No, I don't. I think they're the, sort of heading up. Yeah, they've already made it to. The, they've gone inside. Oh, okay, we're gonna so. we're gonna, I guess, trail a, a safe distance then, or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. And just see, I, I guess, see as much of the process as we can. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, should we sneak up, maintain a bit of cover? Cool. Okay, so yeah, you're walking up to the um, to the sanatorium. Like I said, it's a large sort of three-story yeah. uh, brick. It's sort of pale brick, so it's, it's got a kind of yellowish hue. It's got a large central tower, a um, lot of windows, although uh, they a lot of them appear to have blinds drawn, so you can't really see right. inside. There are sort of large uh, wooden double doors with brass handles um, up a small staircase. Oh, okay. um, and you see a, a sign outside um, which says uh, Hobbs End Sanatorium. Um, yeah, can we scope out the building? Like, sort of wander around, see if there are any ways to get in, I guess, probably. I think we're probably committed to mm-hmm. getting inside this building yeah. one way or another. Um, yeah, okay, do me uh, another notice roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> two and a two. Okay. Uh, a four and a five. Silas, you don't really see anything out of the ordinary. Mm. Um, uh, Edie, you see a, there is a, you know, like the entrances to a storm basement, like the sort of doors oh, yeah. to oh, yeah, like yeah. that. But um, looking at it, you can see that it's been chained and I mean, it looks extremely thoroughly sealed um, as if, yeah. As if Keeping they, something in. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, they don't want that to be any sort of access. And right. it seem, having done a full circuit of the building, it seems like the front door is your sort of only, okay. only point of ingress. Sorry, Silas, we might have to take the direct route. Time to turn on the charm. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to stroll up. Um, oh, I tell you what, is the stagecoach still there? Yeah, it's parked up outside. And the attendants have gone in with wax. With Senator Waxman, yeah. Waxman. Is there any luggage there? Um, I... Like a car- you know, like a case or anything like that. Uh, yeah, there is a luggage compartment on the back, but it is locked. Okay. I'm just wondering if we uh, claim to be bringing the senator's uh, cases in, mm-hmm. we might at least get inside the lobby. I could do. I was imagining you were going to try and find something and dress yourself up and look <laughs> all fancy. Uh, as, uh, we could see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. um, let's have a look around. Can we have a look around at the, the stagecoach? And- you said there's a yeah, there's, there's a, a lot sort thing. of what looks like a luggage compartment on the back, um, and mm. I wonder if there's anything we could do with that lock. I have anything. a lock pick. Do you? But I don't. I don't know how good I am with it. Well, there's only way, one way to find out. You can do a thievery roll. I do not have thievery. Bad. I just have it in case anyone needs it. Okay. Well, <laughs> you can roll it. I mean, you'll be doing this at um, mm-hmm. a minus. Two. It's not a very complicated lock, so it would only be a minus two to your roll. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I got a four and a one, so that's a two. You got a four on the six. I got a four on the six, yeah. Okay. It's not a very complicated lock, so Silas, if you wanted, you could have a go at busting it. Yeah, can I, what can I, is it like a rock somewhere? I don't want to shoot the lock. Um, yeah, there's, you know, it's, there's rocks everywhere. Yeah. If you wanted to make an athletics. Yeah, I do. Yeah, roll. that's a great idea. Um, that I just had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bust the lock. Uh, that is a, a five and a two. Yeah. Five yeah. So it's a success. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you bust the lock with uh, a rock. Clank. Um, and you're able to open the luggage compartment. Um, there is inside, uh, it is a, a spare set of clothes. Fancy uh, clothes. For the senator. They look slightly large for you, <laughs> um, but they are, it's a sort of. It's the new style. Loose there's fit. a fine, fine jacket, mm. a shirt, and a sort of uh, cravat, and there's a pair of shoes that do look about your size. <laughs> All right. So, Looks like I'm getting changed. Um, I, uh, yeah, I guess I get changed. Maybe not in the street, maybe. Inside the stagecoach, um, okay, so not to arouse a, suspicion. Maybe a stealth roll. <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone in the stagecoach? No, I'm stealthily changing inside. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, get stealth. I can do stealth. Ish. That is a five and a three. Okay, a success. Yeah. All right, fine. You get changed inside the stagecoach, and no one in town sees your bum. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Is the fail condition? Everyone sees my yeah. my pale shiny ass. Your, your uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so you are now wearing um, a fine suit of clothes. A slightly slightly too big for you, but you can. I don't know. Maybe I'd like. like to, I get some barbie pins and I'm like, I try to stitch it up, hide it all the back, and I tuck <laughs> okay. it down, and I'm like, we do not speak of this to anyone. <laughs> yeah. All that. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Actually, I want to. I want to repair roll. I'm going to call repair. that repair. You're sort of repairing the clothes Great. here. A flat falls down on my ass. <laughs> I just want to know how good this this pinning is. Okay, that's two and a one. <laughs> two and a one. So, so it's not. Zero. It's not great. It looks a little better than it did, but um. I tried. Yeah. I'm it, it sorry. looks. It's. I think it's. Failed. It's passable. I think. <laughs> the, the shoes are a good fit. Fine. The hat is a good fit. Yeah. Um, so you've got a top hat and you've got shiny <laughs> shoes on now. Um, the jacket looks a bit little, little roomy. Okay. Well, you're okay, now dressed as a, as a fancy guy. Let's stroll up to the front door. <clears throat> um, there is a, a, a pool bell. Um, Very fancy. Which is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, I mean, adequately fancy. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> mm. ring, the, ring the doorbell. <laughs> uh, okay, the door unlocks and seems to sort of swing inwards. Of its own accord, there's some sort of fancy mechanical uh, thing going on here, which okay. has caused the, the door to swing open. But um, it sort of opens out into a expansive lobby, which is extremely white and clinical. There's a very high ceiling, sort of vaulted um, with glass panels along the top. Mm-hmm. There is a um, wooden kind of what you would understand to be a reception desk. Okay, and there is a person there in a in a white coat. Sat behind the uh, behind the counter. Um, hello, yes, come in. Why, hello. Hello. I'm early for my appointment. I, okay. Um, let me just check the appointment book here. What was your name, sir? I'm so ill, I can't remember my name. I see. Uh, Mommy, you with this uh, man? Yes, I'm afraid I'm looking up after him. Um, his name uh, is Mr. S- Spencer Free. Spencer Free. Okay. And we were just hoping this is an emergency. Uh, do you I'm, do you have an appointment? I'm or? afraid we do not. Okay, that's that's fine. We do take we do take. I'm really early. He's he's not well. Bless him. I see. I see. Um, what what seems to be? What is? Do you know what is wrong with him? Uh, um, small delusions, and uh, you know he's wasting away. As you can see, these clothes so bad. <laughs> Gosh, yes, he's, that's he's lost. Clothes are hanging off him. Yeah, he's lost so much. I may die. <clears throat> And something seems to be wrong with his voice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there's infirmary. This is how we all talk back east. <laughs> he needs a little squire daggers. <laughs> it's my fancy voice. <coughs> Don't go to Louisiana, is all I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, uh, he, he's. Uh, he, he got this inflection. He started losing all of this weight, and I, I just can't think of what to do. And I heard about this amazing place and all the miracles you've been doing here, mm. and the miracles of science. And now I just wanted to come here and see if you could help him. No, of course. Well, I mean, um, yes. Uh, let me let me get someone down here to sort of give you a tour of the facilities and see if this is oh, that this would be the be right wonderful. place place for you. Um, as- Did you see my fancy shoes? As the um, receptionist fellow is is saying this, you hear a um, you hear a disembodied voice sort of come over, um, 
through. There are, as you, if you look around, you can see sort of these Trumpets. grills yeah. on the walls. Oh, um, and you hear the voice <laughs> sort of float out and says, This is Director Ducrow, Dr. Jebson Sickles to the treatment area, please. So you just sort of, you hear that. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, reception sort of looks up and says, Ah, it's our director. You can see some of the, the paintings here in the lobby. Um, and I have a few myself. You have a few paintings. paintings. I, I see. Um, yeah, if you'd care to... In my of, large home. Sure. Um, yes, well, that's marvelous for you. Um, it is a beautiful home. <laughs> uh, yes, if you... Did I tell you how wealthy I am? Uh, you, I believe you mentioned, um, so yes, it's very impressive. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you do do me a notice roll, please. I'm deep in the performance, okay. obviously, so. Okay. Uh, which is why I've rolled a three, three and a two. Three and a five. Oh, you got a success. Okay. You were too deep in your <laughs> amazing performance to this really notice anything. pretty well. <laughs> but, um, yes, Edie, you do see a couple of large, um, kind of almost life-size uh, oil paintings on the wall of this director Ducrow. Um, she does resemble the image you saw in the wanted poster, dark complexion, cheekbones, what appears to be um, a shaved head. Um, in one, she's, uh, she's wearing a sort of large headscarf and she sort of stood um, in front of the, of the building, um, looking very imperious. Mm -hmm. um, in another one, she has a, a sort of pillbox hat and a um, quite prim-looking suit, and she's um, she's uh, stood in front of um, a sort of hospital bed with a grateful patient just sort of <laughs> in the background. Um, it's you know, this feels like uh, hospital propaganda. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you, you is that the word? <laughs> in, yes. Yeah, the, re the re receptionist again, he sort of turns to you and says, are you, how are you feeling, sir? You I feel faint! Okay. Let me give you another Benny for this amazing performance. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the, <laughs> the receptionist leans in to, there's a speaking to you on his, uh, on his desk. And says, uh, uh, Dr. Harker, to reception, please, Dr. Harker. Um, he'll be with you in a in a moment. Um, can I offer you anything while you wait? Do you have any cocaine? <laughs> Why yes, of course. It's a hospital. Uh, reaches under the desk and produces a, a bottle of cocaine tincture. Salus. <laughs> I'll save this for later. I will look after that, Mister. <laughs> okay, there is a waiting area where you can uh, you can hang out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> And yeah, if you wanna, anything you wanna do or talk among yourself. Is there like a little sweet tea dispenser? <laughs> <laughs> little whiskey one? Uh, little sure, tea. let's say yes. <laughs> this is a very fancy hospital. Yeah, it's, it's sweet tea with like lemons and mm. co like, you know, all sorts mm -hmm. of, not cocaine. Let's not put in there. <laughs> uh, another announcement happens um, while you're waiting. It says, um, this is Director Ducrow, extraction specialist to the basement, please. Um, extraction. Extraction. Uh, so, yep, yeah, uh, you wait a, a few minutes and then um, up strides a man. Um, he is uh, quite tall. He has a sort of widow's peak. Mm. Um, he's wearing a sort of long black overcoat mm. over um, quite a nice suit. Uh, he's wearing a blue tie and a white mm -hmm. shirt. Um, he introduces himself uh, to you. Puts a hand out, automatically goes. Oh, to you. thank the Lord! Says, Hello, my name is Dr. Harker. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> and you! Now, my colleague here <laughs> said that you're in need of treatment. Yes, please, uh, immediately. I'm feeling very faint. I see. Uh, Harker. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm Mr. Free's assistant. Okay, and your name was? Uh, it was Clementine. Clementine. Clementine and Mr. Free, what a pleasure. <laughs> so, Mr. Free, what appears to be the problem? Well, I just feel all fuzzy in the head. Mm. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I know. 
Well, whatever it is that is wrong with you, Mr. Free, I'm sure we will be able to cure it here at Hobbs End. I've heard of your methods and that they are quite effective. Indeed, we have many satisfied customers. Perhaps you would like to see our facilities. That would be delightful. If you will follow me, I will take you on a tour. <laughs> he says, he sort of turns on a heel, stalks, stalks off, off down, yeah. the, down the corridor. Um, yeah. I love this guy. So, okay, so yeah, um, Mr. Mr. Hark, Dr. Harker um, here, he takes you um, on a tour of the, you're on the ground floor at the moment. So this is a very well-appointed hospital. It's almost like a, a fancy hotel, at least on this floor. There are guest rooms, um, which are all large private suites, um, beautiful uh, decor, very ornate. Um, there's a gymnasium, a bathhouse, a swimming pool. Um, this is, you know, it's a nice mm. and expensive looking hospital. Um, up some stairs, uh, there are some large ornate doors and above that it reads um, treatment area. So, um, having shown you all the kind of mm. the parts of the, uh, of the sanatorium, Mr. Harkas will stops by these doors and he's like, and through here is our treatment area. This is where you would be receiving your medical care, Mr. Free. <laughs> and what kind of medical care would that be? Well, Mr. Free, we have various proprietary <laughs> medicine. <laughs> we have various proprietary methods here that I am not at liberty to divulge, developed by our director, the great Ms. Ducrow, he gestures to another. There's a big oil painting on the wall. <laughs> well, I have not heard of her. What is her uh, medical background? She is a genius in the medical field, Mr. Free. She has developed techniques light years ahead of anything else any other medical professionals are doing in the country. Wow, I feel in very safe hands. Mm -hmm. uh, on this um, the oil painting that he's pointing to is, a, is actually a painting of him and Ms. Crow, he's sort of kneeling <laughs> like this in front of her and she's like, she's standing there in a very elaborate sort of fruit basket style hat. Um, wow. <laughs> like standing there looking, looking to the glorious future of medicine. <laughs> okay, fine. And he's, he's there like, this was painted from life, Mr. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? Oh, it? It is delightful. Okay, so you've, You've yeah. seen the, the treatment area, you've seen the, uh, the sort of guest bits, and now he sort of turns at this point and starts walking you back towards the lobby. And he's like, um, do you think that Hobbs End can provide the services that you require, Mr. Free? I believe so. Do you have private quarters for me? As you saw, the guest suites are very well, well appointed. appointed. Uh, they would be perfect. Uh, wh when can I uh, sign in? Well, of course, Mr. Free. There is still the matter of the bill. Perhaps you would like to come to my office. Absolutely fine. Um, I frantically rummage in the pockets of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the fancy clothes, just in case there's some bills in there. But I make it look like I'm just ill. Okay, cool. Yeah, you just got... <laughs> You seem to be suffering from some sort of paroxysm, <laughs> Mr. Free. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Perhaps some cocaine would make you feel better. I believe so. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, he um, <laughs> he leads you down a um, a long corridor mm. to um, uh, a room you haven't seen yet. It's um, Sort of double doors open into um, an extremely well-appointed office room. Um, there's a, a large desk, a big leather um, chair, big floor-to-ceiling window at the back, and then sort of books on either side. Lots of um, leather-bound books and a mm -hmm. big sort of you know a, a globe, and then there's a, a skeleton and a bunch of sort of medical glassware okay. and, and things around. It's a you know it's a nice-looking medical office. Yeah. Um, Harker sort of ushers you in into the room, um, closes the door behind mm -hmm. you. And um, uh, yes, he's like, and now to business. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, our services here at Hobbs End are rather expensive. Have you seen my shoes? Those are very nice shoes. I'm extremely wealthy. Yes, so the fee will not be an issue then. Not at all. I see, and you have the $10,000 with you now. 
do I? <laughs> it seems unlikely. If I roll really well. Um, yeah, 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 roll a notice roll. <laughs> okay, okay, alright. That's uh, two, two sixes. And that is a six and a one. So I roll the six again. Roll the six again. That is a four. Okay, so a ten, that's uh, success with a raise. Um, no, no, not a ten thousand dollar raise. <laughs> no, but you really notice that you don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> so It's written on my face. Ms. Clementine, do you handle the business affairs for Mr. Free? Uh, I, I do. Uh, we, we do have the funds. Um, uh, somewhat uh, squirreled away. Um, while this is being explained, I'd like to punch the guy unconscious. <laughs> that is just what I was going to do. <laughs> Great lines. You would like to... Okay. I would like to hit him mm-hmm. as hard as I possibly can while he's distracted okay. mm-hmm. by the conversation. Yeah, with... So I, I just wanted to make sure that the facilities were up to scratch before we brought money in and everything. We'd heard some rumors as well as, well as the good ones. And so having seen your fantastic facilities... And, yes, I and... will of course <laughs> require... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will need you to roll me a fighting roll. Okay, yeah, Silas. yeah. I don't have as much in fighting as I thought I did, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. That is a three and a five. Three and a five, so you, okay, so you've succeeded. Um, okay, roll me damage on a punch. I just don't want to unload a gun in this place. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay, I'm going to roll my damage, which is just my strength die, as I understand, but here we go. Okay. That is a five. Okay, you punch him as hard as you can in the face. Mm-hmm. And he just sort of goes. I'm so sorry. These convulsions. Oh, I'm Doesn't so appear sorry. to be ten thousand dollars. I punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing control. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At this point, he um, he is gonna he's gonna stride across to the door and just like turn the lock. Oh dear. This and is you, good. you hear the lock click as it goes into place. Um, uh, he fixes you both with a stare. He's like, I don't believe either of you have the money you required. No, <sighs> that you are here for medical treatment. Well, it was exhausting being fancy anyway. I'm going to pull a gun on him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be interesting. <laughs> Mr. I assume it isn't free. Uh. Correct assumption. <laughs> Nothing in life is free. <laughs> That's good. Is it Benny? For that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very well then, Mr. <laughs> Not Free. <laughs> You've still bought me something very valuable today. Oh, You've no. You've saved me having to head into town and find more receptacles. <laughs> you're the weird guy. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I mean, you're the weird guy. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it in those terms. <laughs> Everyone thinks you're super weird. Well, I was one of the first ones chosen by Director Ducrow. I didn't die like the others. Instead, she found a new purpose for me. <laughs> What, being weird? Uh, <laughs> I'm on the account? What the hell kind of gift is this? He, look, he looks at you, like his eyes narrow. Um, both, of you, both of you make me a notice roll. Okay. Uh, it's a six and a one. Yes. So I roll that again. That is a four. Uh, that is a three to five. Okay, so five. just a success and a success. Success and a raise, yeah. Yeah, Edie, you don't really see. You, you can tell there's something off about his face, but mm. you can't really tell what it is. Um, Silas, when you look at um, Dr. Harker, when he moves his head, it's as if his face takes half a second to catch up with oh. his head. <laughs> it's like, it's not quite, It's there's something very odd about his face. Like, it doesn't seem to be okay. in, the, in the place that it should be. He reaches into the pocket of his long black overcoat and he draws out a long, what's known as a Liston knife. It's a kind of amputation knife. Uh. <laughs> um, and Edie, mm-hmm. when he does this, you can see that his reflection in the blade, it's a very shiny blade, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't match his, his face uh. at all. Instead, um, his face is a kind of, it's riddled with sort of uh, pockmarks and, um, and boils 
His mouth seems to be sort of more on the side of his face and sort of leaning down towards it. The skin hangs limply. He has a sort of pale complexion um, and uh, his eyes are like sort of milky white in, mm. the, in the reflection. He sees you looking at this and uh, he says, well, I suppose there's no point in hiding this any longer. <laughs> and he dispels an illusion and right. reveals himself. And Edie, as a monster hunter, mm -hmm. I think you would recognize this immediately as what is known as a pox walker. Ooh. Blech. Um, Blech. And Blech. yeah, he's gonna try and fight you guys. So we're going into combat. <laughs> okay. Oh, dang. Oh, great. Oxventure presents Deadlands will return after these messages from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Misty Mountain Gaming, who have given us some of their Cage Gear dice to play with today. You can get a set for yourself and check out the other gorgeous Misty Mountain Gaming products by going to mistymountaingaming.com and check the description of this video to find out how you can win your own set of Misty Mountain Gaming dice. Thank you to Misty Mountain Gaming for your support. You know how it is. You go to the World Series of Poker looking to make your fortune, winning big on the big jackpot but then you get there and you don't have any playing cards and they don't have any because they forgot as well. So what are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to go to store.outsidexbox.com and pick up your own set of Oxventure playing cards. It's got this beautiful Oxventure motif on the back and on the front, all the regular playing card stuff. You'll be getting a raw flush in no time with Oxventure playing cards and it works with any other card game. Uh, uh, Blackjack, uh, Gin Rummy, Pokemon doesn't work with Pokemon, but the other ones, it works with them. So go to store.outsidexbox.com to check out these playing cards today. You know why everyone was so angry all the time in the Wild West? Well, I'll tell you, friends, it's because t-shirts had not yet become accepted wear around town, but now they have. And you can wear this one, which is the Oxventure Presents Deadlands t-shirt. It's got all of your favorite characters. Um, Yandrew, uh, Cl Clemency, um, Big Jim, all of them are there and you can wear that on your body by going to store.outsidexbox.com check the link in the description of this video or the merch shelf underneath this video and you too can check out old uncle clandrew here they're all all pop all the popular characters so check that out wear some deadlands on your body today all right let's deal out some cards i'm gonna shuffle and then i'll deal uh -huh. so we have silas Ooh. yep Edie and Dr. Harker. So Silas, the two. Two, okay. Sorry to say. Edie has a six. Oh god. Dr. Harker has a nine. Uh. So, okay, so Dr. Harker here with his Lister knife is going to lunge at you, Silas. Big surprise there. <laughs> because, you punched, <laughs> because you punched him in the face. <laughs> um, Okay, when you're fighting. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, he has failed on both the dice there for his fighting role, so he swings the Lister knife at you, but uh, you're able to sort of mm. dodge out of the way and it whistles past your face. This is a nasty knife. Yeah, this it looks is, horrible. Mm. Yeah, this is unpleasant. He sort of swings at you and he's, he sort of grunts in annoyance that mm. you missed. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Edie. Would a gun bring too much attention? I think we're we're in it now, aren't we? Yeah, we're in you, it now. I mean, um, if you look around his office, it the it is a very heavy oak door, um, right? And you are in a sort of different part of the building than okay. you were before. So okay. It's you know, if you had to guess, you'd say you could probably it probably wouldn't attract as much attention as if you were in another part of the building. Mm. Okay, so what I would like to do uh, is get out my little derringer. 41 um, mm -hmm. and take take a shot try aim right for the the head right in the middle of his you're gonna call your shot so this is a cool shot yeah okay well I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna aim at him um, and just try and slow him down but no I will yeah I'll go I'll go for the head I'll go for the head okay well that's a minus four penalty for the cool shot to the head <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna aim at him generally. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, fine. Um, so Late change your plan. All right, so I've got six and juicing, so that's two d sixes. That's two and a two. So it didn't matter. Okay. okay. You can always re-roll with a Benny if you want. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I will. I made that joke. So that's one and a six. Hey, a six. Roll the six again. Nice. And a two, so that's eight. Okay, so that is a success with a raise. Now mm -hmm. roll me damage. Um, there should be additional damage for the raise. My damage is uh, a two d fours. I've got three 
plus two, that's five, and a d6. Six! Nice. 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 I think you can, because it's a six, you oh, can get Oh, because yeah. I can, yeah, I can get it, okay. And a five, so that's a 16. 16, yeah. 16. all right, that is, that's a success, um, but no raise, so he is shaken. Mm-hmm. Mm. This next turn, we'll have to do a spirit roll to unshake Great. himself. Perfect. Yes. Cool. cool. He sort of like takes the the bullet in the shoulder and sort of sinks to a knee and just sort of snarls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Silas. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna shoot him with both of my cult peacemakers. As I've got two gun kid, it means I can uh, fire a weapon in each hand as two different actions, but without triggering a multi-action penalty. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'd like to. Do that then. I'd like to do that then. So my shooting is a D8. All right. So I've got a D6 and a D8. Let's see what that comes out as. That is a <laughs> a one and a one. Oh, <laughs> snake eyes. Snake eyes. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Yeah, so I've heard. Um, okay. <laughs> Do I shoot myself in the toe or something? What the hell? No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you plus my little toe off. The, pr- the problem is, Silas, you, you're so, you've been so into your performance as yeah. a sort of paroxysming mm-hmm. I'm rich waving man, the, the guns around. You sort of, you're still in that mode as you pull your guns out, and as they sort of rise up out of the holsters, they both go off at once next to you, uh, and that causes you to just sort of go... It, it really scared, it's bell. very loud and very close, and okay. you're, going, you're going to be shaken at the start. Oh, oh no! Oh, All right. Uh, uh, I'm afraid. Alright. Okay, that's the first round. <laughs> and it went great. <laughs> Super great for everyone. <laughs> okay, Silas, Edie, Harker. Silas on a nine. Nice. Edie on a two. No, no. Harker on the Joker. <gasps> right, that means Harker's going first and he gets plus two to all his rolls. <laughs> Okay, Harker looks up at both of you, and this is the first sort of chance you've had to really take in what he looks like, and it's terrifying. It's um, can't believe I touched that with my fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't believe that. And in fact, I'm going to need both of you to make me a fear roll. All so, right, uh, okay. that's a spirit check. Um, it's a five and a one. Five and a two. Okay, so you both succeeded. But I can oh. re-roll if I want a better one. <laughs> you've, you've, you've succeeded as well. Yeah, I've succeeded. Um, okay, both of you sort of like you wince at this, mm. but um, it's you know you're able to shake it off. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Hark is Hark is going having, having another go at you, Silas. I can feel the sweet tea coming back. <laughs> uh, he's having another go at you with the Liston knife. Oh, so, um, uh, Silas. Okay, good. We got. We finally did get a success. Um, <laughs> Great. All right. So Woo-hoo. I'm now rolling uh, damage against your toughness. Is it parry? Oh, parry. Yeah. Okay. My parry's five. Yeah, because you're already shaken, you okay. are going to take a wound no. from this. No. Um, no. All right. So yeah, he sort of runs up to you and um, slashes at you, ah. um, sort of across the the chest with this this list and knife. Um, okay. You take one wound, and um, also uh, I need you to make me a vigor roll at minus two. <laughs> <laughs> the hell! All right, fine. That is a six and a four. So um, whatever minus so two. Minus two from the six. Uh, that's a four. Yeah. You have succeeded. Yeah. Can you? Does, does he get to re-roll that six? Oh, was that to a six on a six? six? That was a six on a six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do get to re-roll that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and another six. He succeeded yeah. anyway. So. And a two. Okay. Nice. Cool. Well, yes, you've you've easily succeeded. Brilliantly um, succeeded. Brilliantly. Yeah. You. <laughs> You're like, wow, that was that was lucky. I could have contracted a chronic disease there, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you do take a wound, and you are you are shaken still. My powerful immune system took care of that one. <laughs> okay, that's his that's his turn. Um, you do believe your wait? No, no, I Silas think it's next. Silas next. Um, you, you need to roll. A, you need to roll to unshake. Spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Spirit, Just shake spirit. it off. Shake it off. That is a five and a one. Cool. Success. All right, you're now free to act. And I can act now, can I? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to try the whole shooting thing again. Why not? <laughs> the rooting and tooting and shooting thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, fine. Uh, so I'm going to roll a yeah, shooting, shooting 
fighting roll. That is a six and a one. Six and a one, okay. Uh, and then a five. So, 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, success with the raise. And so that's an extra d6 to my damage, which is 2d6 plus one. And I've got two sixes. <gasps> wow, nice. Okay, you get to re-roll both of them. Okay, and that is a three and a four. Okay, so then I roll another d6, right? Because of the, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's another four. Okay, so add all that up. <laughs> there are two 11, sixes, two fours, two so that's sixes. 20, so that's 23. Yeah, yeah it's 23. Right. Yep, yeah, that is a success and a raise. Um, With one of my guns. Oh, okay, and you got another one. Yeah, yeah, right. I've got my, I've got my <laughs> two gun kit. Keep going. So that's 23. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be compounded damage because you're shooting him at the same time with these two guns. Yeah, exactly, mm. yeah, just like unloading. That is a six on the D8 and a six on the on the D6. Mm. So I roll another and then a Silence. four. Silence. Silence. So that's a success with a raise. So yeah. now I roll my damage again. Uh-huh. You're going to have to describe how cool this looks. Yeah, that's a six and a two. So that's a plus another two. So, so in total, ten, ten, right? Yeah. So total damage is thirty-three. Okay. Yeah. That's a success and two raises on his nice. uh, on his toughness. So yeah, he's going to take uh, two wounds. So yeah, describe what happens. Um, yeah, I, I finally uh, remember that I'm not playing the bit anymore, and like basically my my two arms zero in on centre mass, and just like unload shots, and they're just like straight through. Like basically, almost converging on the inside of his chest, essentially, um, in like a beautiful, like mathematical perfect alignment. They sort of impact inside his chest, and maybe I don't know, rebound around his ribcage <laughs> a bit. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, Doctor Harker goes flying backwards into a bookcase. A lot of books fall down right. around him. Um, he's staggered, shaken, um, you know, badly wounded, but he sort of staggers to his to his feet. He snarls and raises the, the list of knife. He's There's still, no telling some people. He's still in the still in the fight, <laughs> and he is absolutely furious. <laughs> Edie. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go again with the Derringer. That is a three and a one. Four, 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 four. Not a success. Not a success. Not a success. Do you want to re-roll or are you good? <sighs> Spend those venies. No, yeah. Can't take him with you. He is shaken, so he is more vulnerable right now. That's a five and a three, yes. Five success. and three, okay. One success. Okay. One damage. That is a four and a one, so five. Five. That does not exceed his toughness, I'm afraid. So it's your. <laughs> <laughs> yep, your shot uh, rebounds his... off his. Shiny knife or Your something. Your shot is true, but he sort of like jukes out of the way of the bullet. So it doesn't doesn't get him. Um, all right. Next round. Wow, three rounds of combat. This, yeah. this I don't like it. It's stressing me out. <laughs> if we could wrap this up. Silas. Mm-hmm. Dr. Harker. Silas with the jack. Yeah, it's good. Keely with the four. Okay. Harker with the ace. Oh, Come dang. on. Now. No, <laughs> Harker, you no. jerk. My guy. I'm doing my ammo counters, by the way. I forgot to do it earlier. A pox on That's you. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Harker needs to roll to unshake. Screw it up. Screw it up. Uh, no, he has passed, passed the check. So he unshakes. Damn. Right. And having just shot at him. Uh, Edie, he's going to swing at you this time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's have a fighting roll from the good doctor. Mm. He's not a good doctor. He's a bad doctor. Very bad doctor. He's a very bad, very doctor. bad doctor. Success on the fighting roll. You know what? I don't even think he's a real doctor. Mm. I'm starting to wonder myself. Yeah. I mean, okay, he's following. Edie, what's your parry? Uh, my parry is four. So that is it's a success with a raise. Uh, he slashes at you, ah. uh, catches you on the arm. Um, you take one wound. Okay. And I also need you to make me a bigger roll. Okay. Um, I do have nerves of steel. Okay. Interesting. It means all gross zombie doctors immediately explode. <laughs> if only. As far as everyone knows. If only. <laughs> My hero has learned to fight on through the most intense pain. They may ignore one point of wound penalties. Okay. So I can ignore that one wound. 
hopefully, and not have to do a bigger roll. I think that means wound penalties. I think, so that means you're taking penalties for having a wound. Um, so you're at a disadvantage when you're wounded. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, spend a Benny to soak a wound if you would prefer to do that. That might be a good idea. How many mm. Bennies have you got left? Two. Mm. Mm, I might need to save that for the big, the big bad. You know what? I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take a take. So I need to roll for. Needs to make me a bigger check. A bigger check. A minus two. Roll well. Got a four and a three. Four and a three. Mm -hmm. Would you like to reroll? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Unless you want botulism for the rest of the game. Two and a two. Two and two. <laughs> all right, that's all the bennies. That could be really funny. Two and a four! <laughs> it's hard to roll a disadvantage. <laughs> okay, um, you feel your arm, it sort of starts to feel sort of hot and throbbing, and you're like, oh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, oh, that doesn't feel good. So, yeah, we'll come back to that later. <laughs> uh, okay, so who was next? It was you, me, Silas. yeah, it's me, Silas. I think my only option really is to keep shooting at this guy. I think it's my Do best it. shot. I'm going to roll my shoots, my shooty shoots. That is a five and a two. Okay, success. Uh, yep. Um, With one gun? This is, this is just one gun, yeah. So I'll roll my damage for the one gun. That is a, oh, six and a three. So that's okay. nine. Roll the six roll again. Roll six again. And a two. So that is 11, All right? No, okay. wait. Yeah, nine yeah, plus 11. two, 11. Yeah. All right, roll the other gun. Uh, okay, other gun. That's that and that. That is a five and a two, again. Okay. And the, so that's a success. And that is a three and a two. Okay. So five plus eleven is uh, sixteen. Yep. That is. Uh, he is shaken again. So he's sweet. Not taking any damage there. Ah, uh, damn it. So, yep. Mm. Uh, Edie, you're good. Okay. Um. Annoyed, so I'm gonna pull out from underneath on my on my leg, underneath my skirt. Pull out, sort off uh, oh, Winchester. Damn. Okay. Where the hell were you hiding that? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I'm not sure I would. Uh, so yeah, and I'd like to try and take a shot. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Four and a two, so I've got a four. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, board up Sword of Winchester is 2d8 minus 1. 2d8. Nice. So that is a 6 and a 6, so that's 11. 11. Um, yeah, that exceeds his toughness, and because he's shaken, he takes uh, he takes a wound. Yes! Um, three wounds. So he's on three wounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, this guy's on his last legs. Good. You can tell he's like huffing and puffing, there's blood everywhere pouring out of him and all the all the, the pus that was flowing out of him at a sort of measured rate before is now flowing out at a, oh, an absolute torrent <laughs> out of his eye sockets. Oh yeah, they're, they're real pussy. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. All right, let's, let's run this up. Silas with the five. Mm. Edie with the seven. Harker with <gasps> the jack. Okay, Harker is going to uh, take a swing at you, Silas. Um, all right. So let's give that a go. Is he still shaking? Does he need to do something? Oh yeah, you're right. Shaken. He is shaking. He needs to run. Oh, he has not succeeded yes. on the bigger roll. So yes. yeah, he's um, he sort of shakily tries to to raise the knife, but he's he's having trouble gripping it because he's kind of effed up. So <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, Edie, it's your go. I'm gonna go for the the. Sawn off Winchester again. I've got, yeah. Yeah, I've got more. I don't have to reload. Great, yeah. <laughs> I need to do my other counters. Yeah, uh, three and a two. No. Okay. And I have um, no bennies, so I can't do anything. Okay, I have failure on the shooting roll, so what happens? I get out, and then, but then I just kind of feel like, a, ah, in my uh, arm, and I, and I just, suddenly just, Start thinking about all the things that I need to do, <laughs> and just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Silas, what are you up to? Uh, well, it's worked well so far, so I'm getting the guns out again. Uh, that is a uh, that's a three and a two. Um, 
You know what? I'm going to spend a penny to reroll. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? There you go. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Uh, but it worked this time because I got a six on that. Uh, well, I mean, two. good. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, roll six again. One of us needs to and do a four. something. Okay, so that's round. ten. That's a success with the raise. Yeah, hey. on one done. Roll uh, damage for that I'll with an additional some, d6. Some damage. I get an extra d6 because of the raise. Sure so that's, uh, which is good because that's a. I don't know. It's a five and a one. Yeah. So that's six plus another two. Eight on one gun. Yeah. And I roll the other gun. That is a six and a two. Okay. So roll the six again. Roll the six again. That's a one. Okay. That's a just one success. Yeah. And, uh, and then the damage mm -hmm. is five and a six. And roll six again. It's, uh, Fourteen. So it's cool. Fourteen. So that is uh, one success. But he's already shaken, so he takes a final wound. Yeah. Uh, and his yeah. head goes pop like an overripe pumpkin and just bits of goo and chunks and things splay across the the bookcase mm -hmm. um, and it's absolutely foul yeah it smells real bad yeah I'd say don't touch it mm. yeah did you were you far enough away to avoid <laughs> yeah I was far enough away yeah. getting any in your mouth no, no, no <laughs> my no, mouth no. and not my nose no uh, no 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 yeah um, so Dr. Dr. Harker his head exploded. Yeah. Uh, he sort of sinks to his knees and then just slumps forward. Yeah. Face Perfect. down. Um, yeah. So. Is there like a long piece of metal or wood anywhere in this room? I'd assume there's something, right? Yeah, probably. There's a, a fireplace. There's some fire tools. Fire poker. Right. I'd like to that. just. I assume he's got the ring of keys. <laughs> 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 I'm going to pluck the keys off his belt. <laughs> Bet you'd rather be next to a horse right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's <laughs> let's make this. This is interesting. Let's make this a thievery roll. I don't have thievery. Wow. I, mean, I was assuming it would be. To be honest, it'd be, yeah, it would be a lot easier. Let's just... Um, <laughs> Let's make I've it got all the time in the world to get this right. <laughs> Let's make it a thievery roll, but with plus two rather than okay. Well, that would be penalty. that would just be d4 D and a d6. Right. Right. Okay, so that's a one and a four. Okay, so yeah, that's a success. You reach in with the fire poker and you sort of pull his coat up, um, yeah. and you can see there are a sort of there are some keys yeah. in there. So you're gonna just fish that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you pull out this this key ring. Um, <laughs> There is a sort of wooden sign on it, and the uh, the sign says uh, "treatment area." We're in on the key. <laughs> you are in, and that is, I think, where we will leave it for the first part of this episode of Deadlands. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Uh, thank you to Mike and Ellen for playing. Uh, thank you to Misty Mountain Gaming. Uh, for sponsoring this episode. Uh, Misty Mountain, of course, giving us some of their brand new cage dice to play with. Uh, you can get a pair yourself and see some of the gorgeous Misty Mountain Gaming products by going to mistymountaingaming.com. Our thanks to Misty Mountain Gaming for their support. We'll see you next time for part two.